Over the last year and a half, Storyline has released a number of new accessibility enhancements. Many of them have to do with how the navigational player works in terms of color contrast, keyboard navigation, and screen reader usage. Some of these enhancements are only available in the modern player. Here are seven helpful accessibility features you can only get in the modern player. Number one, light and dark focus colors. When learners use a keyboard instead of a mouse to navigate your course, a frame appears around the interactive object that's active at the time. So here I can tab through each of the buttons and when I get to the one I want, I press spacebar or enter to activate it. In both players, you can indicate what color you want to use for the frame. That can be a difficult choice though. For example, the default yellow frame works well on this dark slide, but not on this light slide. It's hard to find one color that can work with any design. In the modern player, you can now choose two focus colors that work together, showing at the same time, so they'll be visible on any design. By the way, one of the nice new features of the modern player is now you can select your own background color instead of just the default choices of black and white. But you cannot specify the color of the text. With the built-in black and white options, the text has adequate contrast, although that wasn't always true. So when you select your own background color, You'll get light text if you select a dark background and dark text if you select a light background. But if you're working in medium tones, there might not be enough contrast with either the dark or the light. Number two, caption font size. When you add closed captioning to audio and video files, the classic player lets you adjust the size of the player font, which includes the size of the closed captions. But if you want larger captions, you have to make all player text bigger, which you might not want to. Now here, I've made it extra big so that you can tell really clearly what's happening. But in the modern player, you can separate the two. You can adjust the size of the player text in one field and the closed caption text in another. Now be sure to manage your slide layout carefully. You don't want the captions to cover important content. And the bigger your captions are, the more of the slide they'll cover up. Number three, status icons. Up until recently, learners could only keep track of their progress in a course based on color coding. Unfortunately, that doesn't help learners who are colorblind or have issues with low contrast. And learners who use a screen reader to tell them what's happening in the course weren't able to access that status information at all. Now, this is still true in the classic player, but now the modern player uses icons. The current slide has a bar on the left side. Visited slides have a checkmark icon, and lock slides have a lock icon. In addition to these visual enhancements, behind-the-scenes programming has been added so a screen reader can pick up these progress indicators as well. This is a good example of how accessibility features often benefit everyone. Regardless of your visual ability, it's now easier to determine where you've been, where you are, and what's ahead. Number four, alt text on the logo. Since day one of Storyline, you could add a logo to the sidebar. But up until recently, you could not add alt text to that logo for individuals using screen readers. Now in the modern player, you can. Just add your alt text right under the logo. And if you consider it decorative only and don't want the screen reader to pick it up at all, you can just uncheck the visibility box. Number five, zoom to fit. When the modern player first came out, I never used it for accessible courses. This was partially due to the color contrast issue I've already mentioned, but also due to the fact that learners could not magnify the slides in their browser. In the classic player, when you have the player locked, the learner can use the zoom controls in their browser to magnify the slide. But until recently in the modern player, if you magnified the course using the browser, it only magnified the player elements. And because the modern player is set to always use the full screen, it has to make the slide smaller 
to allow for the larger player. So a learner who wants to magnify the slide can only make it smaller. But now the modern player has an option called Zoom to Fit. It's in the accessibility controls. And if the learner activates that feature, the browser magnification works differently. Everything gets bigger. The learner will have to scroll to see everything, but that's expected. By default, this feature is turned off, and learners can go in and turn it on. But they aren't likely to know it's there and what it does, so you might want to point it out in a special screen with instructions for accessibility, or you can turn it on by default. It's governed by a variable. So if you go into your variables dialog box and change the default value, then it will be on by default. And any learner can still go into the accessibility settings and turn it off if they want. Number six, collapsible sidebar. In general, learner choices are good for accessibility. When learners can adjust their environment to meet their needs, everybody wins. When you consider the neurodiversity of your learners, one learner might benefit from seeing the course flow and structure in the menu off to the side. To another learner, it's a significant distraction to always have it there. Now in the classic player, the sidebar is either on or off. The learner can't choose. Yes, you can put features like the menu in the transcript in the top bar instead, which does let the learner choose whether or not to show it. But somebody who wants to leave it up all the time can't if it's in the top bar. So in the modern player, you get the best of both worlds. Those who want to keep it visible can and those who find it distracting can collapse it and then bring it back only when they need it. Number seven, movable seek bar. Another way you can provide learners with choices is with the seek bar. In both players, you can set the seek bar to allow seeking. This lets learners rewind and fast forward, which is especially helpful for anyone who might need to revisit some of the content to fully process it. However, if you have a compliance course or similar content where it's not appropriate to give the learners the option to jump ahead on a slide, in the classic player, your only choice is to turn off the seeking feature, which means learners lose that element of control. In the modern player, there's a third choice. If you really need to make sure learners don't skip ahead on your content, but still want to give some flexibility, you can set it to allow drag after completion. The first time through, everybody has to listen straight through. But after that point, a learner can go back and revisit parts of the slide, jump around, and find exactly what they want to watch and listen to again. A lot of Storyline's new features are going into the modern player only and not the classic player. So if the modern player isn't your go-to, it might be time to switch.